today from East Central Alabama, it's Super Speedway Racing in Arca from the biggest and baddest of them all. Here they come, onto the front straightaway. Five wide, still grinding on each other. Here we go, a little contact. Here he comes inside. Look at that push, side by side. No trouble. Oh, it is getting good in the Arca Racing Series. It's the fourth race of the 2018 ARCA Racing Series season. The second and final Super Speedway race. It's the General Tire 200 from Talladega Super Speedway. It's great to be with you. Thanks for joining us. One of my favorite events in any racing series all year. I'm Kevin Lee, along with a former winner in the Cup Series. Phil Parsons is with us. Qualifying was very tight, Phil. So what is going to determine the outcome of this race? Well, I think you have to survive first. In order to be there at the end, you have to be around and get through the middle part of this race. Just look at last year here. We had a great battle right up front here. Had several cars racing for the lead. Watch, you're going to have the 78 car just creep up the racetrack a little bit. He opens up that bottom lane. The 55 makes contact, and it's going to take out a bunch of contenders here. Three of our top five qualifiers were taken out in that incident. A lot of contenders. Let's list four of them, though, we want to talk about. Well, I think we have to consider a lot of guys, but four of the guys I'm going to keep my eye on, or guys and girls, actually, are Brandon Lynn in the 55. He was actually leading the race last year on the last lap. They had a caution. He ran out of gas before they could get to the end. Bobby Gerhardt, if anybody knows how to get around this place, it's Bobby Gerhardt. He's won nine times here in Daytona. Sheldon Creed's another good one. And Michael Self also cons is considered our favorite. And now it's time for the most famous words in motorsports. Here to give the command, please welcome our Grand Marshal, parts manager for Terry Cullen Chevrolet, Ray Vendiver. On behalf of General Tires, Drivers, start your engine! Thirty-one drivers are strapped in and ready to go. Each race weekend, we like to introduce you to the drivers, let you learn more about them, and our general tire driver profile this time features the drivers' hobbies. So it all started when I was in college at the Naval Academy um, after we won at the Texas Bowl against Missouri and uh, we beat them and everyone challenged me to do a freestyle rap at the end. Somebody gave me a beat and I made it happen. I love any kind of board sports besides skateboarding. I don't think I can stand up on a skateboard. I love to snowboard, I love to wakeboard, skiing, uh, any kind of water sport or snow sport really. I love being around nature. Um, I'm sort of an amateur photographer. I went on a week-long safari where I was just camped out in a tent with the animals, with, you know, elephants and giraffes and hippos, like, right outside our tents. Jay Wu, I'm on the scene. I'm looking clean. I'm acting mean. I act the class. I'm getting cash. Got Jeff Gordon's name on my dash. When I ride fast, no going slow. Take your ride. I'll take some moats. <laughs> All right, Phil, other than freestyle rapping, what are your hobbies? <laughs> uh, probably golf. I'm not very good at it. How about you? Uh, probably transporting children is what I do most <laughs> right now. All right, we're ready to go racing coming up in a moment. This evening, it's ARCA Racing from Talladega Super Speedway in Alabama. Thanks for joining us on FS1. Cars are rolling, and we are about ready to go. It was dreary yesterday, rain off and on throughout the day, but perfect today. Some clouds, a lot of sunshine this evening, and 72 degrees. Well, it's been a quick turnaround for these teams. They raced less than a week ago, just this past Sunday in southern Indiana at the short track at Salem Speedway, and it was a wild finish. Christian Eckes in the white 15 car being challenged by 15-year-old Chandler Smith, who has started on the pole in the last two races, down to the final lap of the race. A blown tire for Smith. He's into the wall. Eckes gets his first ARCA win. Just announced this week that Eckes will run some truck races for Kyle Busch Motorsports next year, so exciting time for that young man. And exciting times for Arker as well as we look at the point standings with Sheldon Creed off to an early start on Zane Smith. Yeah, Sheldon Creed hasn't finished worse than third in the three races we've had this year. 
Well, earlier today, we learned something about the future of ARCA, and it seems very positive. NASCAR is acquiring the ARCA Racing Series. ARCA organization has been uh, closely associated with NASCAR before there was a NASCAR and before there was an ARCA. And today, is, it's uh, an exciting time that that we're making a formal uh, joining of the two organizations. 2018 is, is pretty well set and we're, we're building 2019 as we speak. So from an ARCA perspective, the ARCA Racing Series presented by Menards, what you see today is what you're going to see tomorrow. Uh, we're always working on it. We're sanding and polishing, trying to make it better, trying to make it stronger. And uh, that's a big part of, of, of us joining NASCAR. Phil, what do you think this means? I think it's great. These, these organizations have worked together since the early 50s, and I think Ron Drager told me earlier today that I owe it to the teams, the sponsors, these racetracks, to know that we're going to go forward beyond the next year or two, and this will ensure that. Seems very positive to me. All right, back on track qualifying today. Group qualifying, groups of five. So that has a lot to do with how successful you're going to be, and this was the most successful group, Phil. You see Michael self right up front there that's the reason these guys all qualified well towards the front because they stayed together first career general tire poll award for michael self who has won two of his last three races so this is how they will line up the general tire 200 starting grid chase purdy also has his best career starts yeah keep an eye on bobby gerhardt back in row number four brandon lynn led this race late last year josh williams a two-time winner is back See Riley Herbst there for Joe Gibbs back in row number nine. Still some really good cars mid-pack. How about Travis Braden back in row number 13, a former winner here in the series. Won a Lucas Oil Raceway in the short track in his very first ARCA race. All right, fantastic looks on board. We have five of them tonight. Yeah, let's ride along on the general tire on board. This is Brett Holmes, the Southern State Ship Bank Chevy, and he is from nearby here in Alabama. Home game for him starting 19th. Riley Herbst has won on a big track before, not a technical super speedway. He'll have the Orca Coolers on board starting 18th. Last time out, Leilani Munter had her best career finish of eighth at Daytona. She's in the veganstrong.com Toyota. She starts 15th. Gus Dean won this race two years ago. He'll start 14th with the Gree Cooling Products on board. Our pole sitter from Daytona, Natalie Decker. That's the N29 Capital Partners. Yamaha Power Products on board. She will start from fourth. All right, can't wait to see how this one is going to play out. They are lined up, pace laps are underway, and we are going to go green from Talladega next on FS1. It's a beautiful night in Alabama, and we are in store for what we hope is going to be very entertaining racing. Just about set to go green in the General Tire 200. With Phil Parsons and Jim Trado, I'm Kevin Lee. They are lined up. The pole sitter, Michael Self, has chosen the bottom line. Remember now, the start-finish line on most racetracks would be about right there, but it's all the way down almost to turn number one, so that creates for some fantastic finish. Red car on the top side is young Chase Purdy. In fact, six of the top ten, 20 or younger. Creed and Decker in the second row. Tolman Lamastis and then veterans Ger Gerhardt right behind him. It's time to go from Talladega. Green and the General Tire 200. Side by side up front. Purdy trying to keep that top line all by himself, even with Self. Self is getting the push. Can he get in front early? Remember that 28 car of Sheldon Creed on the inside behind Self is a teammate to Purdy, that red number eight on the outside. The bottom line, the way to go early. Purdy drops back, battling for third position now. How about three wide already, Kevin? <laughs> That's Josh Williams, that six car outside, making it three wide. Ooh, a little contact. That's Looks Gus like Dean right behind him. Might have been a little contact with a 98 of Blaine Perkins. Watch Sheldon Creed going around the outside, trying to grab the lead from Michael Self. The teammates lined up now. Now Sheldon Creed's going to jump over to the inside in front of Michael Self and leave his teammate out there by himself. 
Purdy is coming back too, getting a little push from the 54. That's Bo Lamastis in the Crosley Brands Toyota for David Gillen Racing. With some great racing early on here. You would think these guys would try to just line up on the inside. Remember that your double yellow line is your friend. You cannot go below that double yellow line to make a pass to improve your position. Look at this. This looks like the formation lap. <laughs> At 185 miles an hour. On board with Natalie Decker. Started from the pole at Daytona. Ran well all race. Qualified well again in this one. And she runs on the bottom side of road number two right now as they remain perfectly aligned with Creed itself out in front. He mentioned earlier, Kevin, that the qualifying speeds were very, very tight. This may be one of the tightest fields we've ever had here at Talladega, and it's showing right now. That's on board with Decker. Purdy on her right side. 17 cars right now within one second of the lead. <laughs> what did we say? Just simply get to the end? Makes it a little more difficult when they're running side by side and back in the pack a little bit. You got three wide again there for a moment. May have sun. The sun may come into play here too. Make it make it difficult over in turns three and four. Yeah, I wonder how tough that is when you do get to sunset. So self remains up front. Creed and Purdy battle for second. Let's welcome in Jim Trado joins us from Pit Road. Guys, what's interesting to note is the youth movement is in full swing here. It's the fifth in points is Chase Purdy in that red and black number eight Bam Bama Buggies Toyota. His team is MDM Motorsports. What they've done, they've employed TJ Majors to help this young man who lives an hour and 45 minutes away. That team is prepared with TJ Majors spotting for him, and Mark McFarland is also crew chief for him because Kelly Bericla is still on the couch. So, Kelly, we wish you well. Get better. Get soon back to the racetrack. But Purdy's got a lot of experience around him in his Talladega debut. This young man in the number eight said to me, I love adrenaline. I love Talladega. I want to do well, and I want to lead early. So he's going to do what he can to stay with his teammate, Sheldon Creed, here early on. T.J. Majors, longtime spotter for Dale Earnhardt Jr. Phil, they look like they're getting a little wiggly here early they are. on. This they is are. scary in the opening moments. Three wide back there in about the seventh or eighth row. Self in the green and white Sinclair Lubricants car on the bottom side. Chase Purdy, the Bama Buggies, MDM Motorsports Toyota on the top side. And they're still side by side for the top 15 plus. Yeah, these cars are really dancing around. They're not very stable, it doesn't appear. We were watching practice earlier, and I thought the same thing. I said, well, maybe by race time, they'll get them snugged up a little bit. But these cars look like they're a little bit hard to handle. That green car in about row six back there on the top side is Leilani Munter. She danced up a little bit high, thought about going on her own and tucked back in line. Josh Williams again peeks out to the outside of Leilani in that six car. Josh has spent most of the time on the outside of three wide here. He's been running full time in the Xfinity Series. He's a two time winner a couple of years ago in the ARCA Racing Series. Actually ran second here the last time he ran this race back in 2016. Purdy shown the leader right now, and it's going back and forth by inches. Now Purdy will scoot out in front a little bit. Bo Lamast is helping him. Purdy will get down to the bottom side. 25 cars right now in this lead draft. The third row there, if you include Purdy as a row all on his own, are the two points leaders. On the bottom side, Sheldon Creed, Zane Smith in that number 41, La Paz Margarita mix Toyota for MDM on the top side. He's second. That third car in line on the outside, that black car, that's the 98 of Blaine Perkins. Only one previous start in the Arca series, and that was Kentucky last year. Doing a nice job here today. Well, this has been an impressive start to this race, and it looks like we're in store for entertainment tonight. 18-year-old Chase Purdy from Meridian, Mississippi is the early leader in the General Tire 200 from Talladega. Wild opening laps from Talladega Super Speedway in the General Tire 200. 
Zane Smith, second in the championship. He won at Nashville earlier this season, is now the leader. And we had more than just a lead change in the last few moments. Michael Self, the pole sitter, running third right now, was involved in a little bump. It looks like he got into Smith just a little bit, then came down in the 28th. That's Sheldon Creed. So he hit the top two in the championship there. <laughs> a little pinball action there. And then here is how Smith went to the front around the outside from a starting position of eighth in this race. But we weren't done yet with contact. A little further back, Bo Lamastis in the 54, Joe Graff Jr. in the 77, Michael Self involved in this one again. Yeah, Bo got really loose there. Made contact with the 77 of Joe Graff Jr. Watch him get loose. Has to chase it up the hill, makes contact with the 15 of Michael Self. Nice save by Michael Self and a nice save by Joe Graff Jr. in that 77 big time car. That's pretty remarkable. The 54 and the 15 could keep it from going around there mm -hmm. with that contact. And still up in contention, all running up in the top five or six. So Smith, Purdy, Self, Creed on the high side is Blaine Perkins, another one of the teenagers, six of them in this race from Bakersfield, California. Some good ones from Bakersfield. Yeah. Kevin Harvick, <laughs> there has the been Mears quite a gang, few. Rick Absolutely. Mears and his family. You know, Kevin, we watched both trouble. Brandon Grosso and Bobby Gerhardt were involved. That's Grosso in the 52. Bobby Gerhardt was on the inside of him. He was in the five car. Grosso was one of those six teenagers, 18 years old, from New Jersey. And does Tommy Prater also have damage? He does. Tough break. Thomas Prater had such a good run going in Daytona, battling up in the top two or three positions. It relegated back to a 14th place finish, but that was his best race by far. But you see, look how high the front end of the five of Bobby Gerhardt is. All the damage on Tommy Prater's number nine right there. That's a shame for Gerhardt because he looked like he was a legitimate contender. It's been a few years since he won a race, but he's won nine in his career, and he's been quick throughout the day today. Yeah, it looks like that damage came from maybe coming down off the bank onto the apron. Push the front end up. Let's see if we can see what happens here. There's a nine of Prater around. There's Grasso, the 52. Here's Bobby Garrett. He's going to turn hard left to avoid Grasso. You see the damage right there. It pushes his front end up when he got down on the apron. So simply collected after two others got involved. So we're under our first caution. 12 of the 76 are complete. There's the damage for last year's championship team, Ken Schrader Racing and Brandon Grosso. So some work to be done on pit road and a restart coming up. Zane Smith, Chase Purdy, Michael Self, the top three at Talladega. Under our first caution in the ARCA Racing Series presented by Menards, the General Tire 200 from Talladega Super Speedway, Zane Smith is the leader. Let's update the Scott Rookie Challenge, a championship within the championship points out of your best 15 races throughout the season race number two this year at nashville super speedway in frigid temperatures in the 30s mdm dominated this race zane smith and sheldon creed going at it back and forth and zane smith got his first win very emotional after this win it had been two plus years since he had won in anything and it was a big one for him. So he has the early jump in the Scott Rookie Challenge right now. Chase Purdy is six back. Natalie Decker is third. I think that's going to be a great battle all year long. All three of those drivers running full time here in the series. Zane Smith did do 14 races last year and was runner up a couple of different times. But this is the first season that he's eligible for all the races. He's 18 and can do the super speedway races. So he's eligible for the Scott Rookie Challenge. And he's the subject of our Scott Rookie Spotlight, another California kid. Yeah, he's been back here, back east, here, racing legend cars for years and then super late models, really progressed up through the ranks, doing a nice job here. There's Marty Lindley right there, Jim. Yeah, and Zane Smith actually led the first 24 laps at Daytona to start our season, so he's used to leading these fields, but I asked him how he got acclimated here to Talladega, and he said, 
my spotter Derek Nealon's been really helpful. They're even discussing where they want to restart in this race. Zane said the car has been super fast at the outset, but it's a little tight in the center of the racetrack in the corners. And guess what? They're talking about starting on the outside because their teammate is behind them. That experience, Derek Nealon spots for Kyle Larson on Sundays and Marty Lindley, the crew chief already with a win with Zane this year, are planning to run this race from the front. They want to lead as many laps as they can. That was the strategy until getting caught up in a wreck at Daytona. This brand new piece, the La Paz Margarita Mix, number 41, has certainly been stout thus far. The kid reported just a slight handling issue thus far in this race. Going green this time. That is the easiest way to stay out of trouble. Stay out front as much as you can. And I like starting on the outside with your teammate right behind you, Sheldon Creed. Of course, that's another teammate on the inside of the eight car of Chase Purdy. And with the way it's been going for MDM, you know that's your stiffest competition. It's really shaping up to be a battle with MDM and Venturini this season. Yeah, that 15 car is out of Venturini Motorsports stable. They won all four poles this season. Michael Self right there in the green and white car on the inside of the second row. Smith, Purdy, Self, Creed, Perkins, Holmes, Lamastis, Core, Decker, and Dean, the top 10. The pace car ducks down. A long way down to the start finish line near turn one. You just feel like you're crawling <laughs> at this point. We're ready to go. Let me loose. Let me go. Smith controls the restart on lap 15. 202 miles scheduled from Talladega. Back to green flag racing. Creed giving Smith the push he wants, but Self will help, help Purdy on the bottom line go to the front. How about Brett Holmes having a good run early in that 23 car? Alabama guy, he'll be racing tonight and tomorrow night on the short track across the street. It's just a little bit different than this place. <laughs> and that's dirt, by the way. See Zane Smith pull over a little bit to the side to side draft. Michael Self looks to the outside. They almost make contact. That's a bold move, and Self is going to grab the lead. Can he get down, though? He's going to need the help of Smith to do it. it looks like the initial start again. Got about a dozen rows of two by two. This has become pretty common in restrictor plate racing, yet I'm still amazed every time I see it. I'm uh, I'm simply captivated by this, and I'm glad I'm not racing it. And you, and you have to realize these guys are out there running speeds upwards of 185, maybe 190 miles an hour, and these cars don't drive like you're on the interstate. These cars are a handful. On board with Riley Herbst. He's been trying to make his way up from the mid-pack position. Running 15th right, right, right now. now. Well, that can change pretty quick. Well, look at that, 15th under 17th <laughs> on the second back. There's Smith diving down to the bottom. Self will go down to set the block. Smith moves back up to the high side. That opens up the bottom for the eight of Chase Purdy. Couple teammates now lined up in the outside. Smith in that black 41. Now he's gonna jump to the inside. Is Self gonna be able to cover the spot? Just barely. I think Smith's got his nose down there. He's gonna go side by side, and he has the preferred position now. But Creed comes back to help push the Venturini car around Creed's MDM teammate, or at least it looked that way for a moment, but Smith is gonna hang on because he's got help from another teammate and Purdy right behind him. That petty blue car, the 46, that's Sean Corey. He had a great run going at Daytona. Was in contention on the very last restart. Got taken out in an accident, but had a great run. Doing a nice job here today, too. He's up 16 positions from where he started in there the he is. first spot. Richard Petty's grandson, Thad Moffitt, actually runs that car on some of the short tracks. Sean Corr running it here at Talladega. He's finished fifth here before, also fifth at Daytona. Those are his best ARCA results. All right, let's find out more of what's going on on Brett Holmes with Jim. Well, guys, he started way back in 19th, but qualifying in those groups was favorable over some, but not for the Alabaman. Brett Holmes and his team worked really hard on this race car that landed on its side and slid down the back stretch at Daytona. The six full-time employees in the shop really put it together for the 23 machine of Brett Holmes. This a tribute paid job to fellow Alabaman, Puck Strickland, the old Hills Brothers car, the number 23. They are excited because this young man said, my crew chief and I are working on just a little bit more out of this race car. They didn't really know what they had at the outset because they missed some practice time. 
because of a wiring issue. So this is really proving they made the right call to get this car ready to go. Problems for Natalie Decker, and we're under caution for the second time. Let's see what happened to the 25 from Venturini. She's on the inside, makes co some contact with the 77 of Joe Graff Jr. Oh. Makes pretty significant contact with the outside safer barrier. Looks like they were fighting for space on the inside, Kevin. They're back running in the 13, 14, 15 position. It's pretty hard right side hits for Natalie Decker, the N29 Capital Partners Yamaha Power Products Toyota. But she's come to a stop now. And Leilani Munter, the other young lady in this race, also with some damage. Leilani was not in a favorable group, so she didn't have a very solid starting position. Pretty good car, but started 15th in this race. Both those ladies with top 10 finishes at Daytona earlier this year. There's a look at the Vegan Strong on board. Leilani is doing the most races this season that, that she's ever done in ARCA. After finishing eighth at Daytona, which was her career best. Doesn't seem, appear to be a lot of damage to that Vegan Strong Toyota. A little bit of right front damage. Maybe more significant for Munter. She hit hard several times. This is on board with Munter. Let's see what happened to her. And there you can see Decker upside, and she just wow the right front. That Almost got through. That could have been so much worse, yeah. too. You hear she barely had time to back off the throttle and just made slight contact with Natalie. Well, here we go. This is a little bit early than what you'd like to see for the, the window. Pit. So, Michael Self, the leader, he stayed out. Zane Smith, though, leads them down pit road. And we'll watch the aid of Chase Purdy come in first. Yeah, most of the crew chiefs said they didn't really feel like they would need tires. They can go about 45 to 50 laps. So this just ensures them that they can go a little bit farther back into, into the 60s before they have to do it again. Jim, what's going on down there? Yeah, a lot of guys fuel only here. No adjustments on fixing Zane Smith's slight handling issue. The only wrench I saw in the back window was the Bola Mastis's number 54 Toyota. All cars that came to pit road that I'm a visible view of, fuel only here. Riley Herbst also had intended on coming in early. He was not in the monkey see, monkey do position. They're all waiting to see if the leader pitted, and they came anyway. So Michael Self stays out. The question will be, was this too early to make it your only stop? Unless there's a lot of caution. Leilani Munter is back out. We'll check in on her and the leader, Michael Self, in a moment. Caution number two in ARCA. Talon Agon, FS1. It's been nearly constant side-by-side -side racing at Talladega Super Speedway in the ARCA Racing Series, and we're under caution number two. Kevin Lee, Phil Parsons, Jim Trado with you. Thanks for joining us on FS1. Michael Self is the leader of this race. He started from the pole. He also is our current leader of the General Tire Super Speedway Challenge. This is race number two of that championship within a championship. The first, obviously, the season opener at Daytona. As always, it was wild. He was running fifth right there when that incident happened. Drove through it and went on to victory. It took us a little while to get this one done. We tried <laughs> several times. Arca does not finish with a green-white checkered. It's simply a one-lap shootout, and they do finish under green. And Self got it done. That was his second straight win. He won the season finale last year, and he continues on a run. So he has the early jump in the General Tire Super Speedway Challenge, dating all the way back to 1984. Davey Allison was the first championship uh, winner in that. And it's really for the car entrance. So it's Bill Venturini's number 15 that has the lead. And Willie Mullins, let's mention him and Wayne Hickson's number three. He had a great run at Daytona. He sure did a career run for him, but unfortunately not able to be here for this race this weekend. I'll give a shout out to his business, Bugsy's Auto. He's going <laughs> to focus on my primary business. That helps fund the racing. So we'll see you back soon at the track.
All right, this is the schedule for the General Tire Super Speedway Challenge, and this one is a double points race because General Tire is the title sponsor. As well as Charlotte and the first race up in Pocono will be double point races. And we'll have all those for you on FS1 or FS2 for you this season. So let's find out what else is happening. And I want to get into some strategy in just a moment. But in particular, tell us about the 55 car, Jim. Well, Brandon Lynn was the driver that was leading this race late in the going with another team, Mesa Mission Motorsports, a year ago, and ran out of fuel late. That's very obvious and evident on his mind as he's now with Venturini Motorsports in the number 55 machine, courtesied by Billy Venturini, and his spotter up top is Frankie Kimmel. That's the 10 times son. More importantly, what Brandon's worked on, he said, is I have had a lot of time on the grader. He's working with the family business. His last start in ARCA was this race one year ago. Getting this chance in a race at Charlotte, he said it takes every ounce of what we're doing to get back to the track. He is hungry for the victory, and he just looked at me and said, I have played over that race over and over in my mind. I need to do what I need to do to save as much fuel as possible. He's doing that thus far in the 55 machine. Running 12th right now. He was fastest in practice. So I remember last year, it seems like it was lap 23, 24, 25, under caution when many, including Lynn, came in. Here they came in on lap 20. How much caution are they going to need to make it? I, I don't think they can make it from here. I talked to all the crew chiefs down in the garage area. Some of them said they could only go 42, 43 green flag laps. Some of them said they could go as many as 50. But if you do the math from 20 to, to 76 is 56 laps. I think you'd have, a, have to have a lot more cautions than what this caution is going to give us in order to make it. But I like the strategy of coming in now. I mean, Sheldon Creed gave up a top five spot to come in. He's running seventh, and he's full of fuel right now, Kevin. So if you're a crew chief, though, how much do you make that decision based on watching the beginning of this race and all this two-by-two two racing and already two cautions? Are you banking on there's going to be a couple more? Well, I, th I think I would like to have that insurance that I had enough, that I had 20 laps of fuel here like these guys do uh, over what Michael Self. And uh, there's actually three cars that have stayed out. Brett Holmes in the 23, as well as Andy Sice at 02, running in fourth. They have not made their way to pit road. And remember, we also had pace laps at the start of this race as well. So self the leader, Brett Holmes on his top side. They have not stopped. Cody Robaugh came in under the first caution in row number two in that number seven, Grant County Mulch Chevrolet. Lap 13 was when he pitted. Andy Sice in the 02 car up top from our motorsports. He also has not pitted. Everyone else has been in. Look at Bobby Gayhart back in the fifth position. We talked <laughs> about him suffering some damage, but had a good car. Well, here he is again. And he made his stop on lap 13. All right, let's get into this track a little bit. It's unique because it's the biggest. It's big. You see 33 degree banking in the corners. This racetrack was just built for speed. Phil Elliott qualified here at over 212 miles an hour way back in the late 80s. You see the front straightaway banked 16 and a half degrees. Back straightaway is essentially flat. Long, long straightaways here. This track just purely built for speed. Bill Venturini still holds the ARCA qualifying record in 1987, over 205 miles per hour. Let's take a look at our race analysis. You see this race is 76 laps that we just talked about, 202 miles. Our pit window under green is about 45 to 50 laps. These guys could stretch it with enough caution laps. We estimate pit stops one to two, depending on what happens here. Maybe some of those that came in know that we're going to have to make a splash at some point because you always have to take into consideration overtime. Pace car off, ready to restart again. Self, the green and white Sinclair car, started from the pole, he's at the point again. Holmes, the Alabama native, on his top side. Robaugh, Seiss, row two, then Gerhardt, Doza, Smith, Creed, Purdy, and Perkins, the top 10, back to green at Talladega. See that 0-2 outside the second row, Andy Sice. It's no big surprise that he's up there. He finished second in this race last year. Great modified racer, couple-time champion in the Wheeland Southern Modified Tour. Going way up on the top side, I think that was Dave Mater, who won way back in 1991 in Michigan in the Arca Series. He's an Alabama guy and hasn't raced here in a long, long time. Great view from the onboard of the 23 of Brett Holmes. Saw that Univ Auburn University helmet he was wearing. That's where he goes to school. 
Still lined up two by two. See the cars dancing around there. There's Brian Doza, the white number 57. Third in line on the outside. Bobby Gerhardt, that block number five inside row three. Holmes nosing right in front. He started way back in 19th position. He's the biggest mover since the start of this race. Up 17. Natalie Decker made a trip to the infield care center. She has been checked and released. She's okay after that crash that brought out the caution. See these cars moving around. You see Gus Dean just moved from the inside line to the outside line behind that blue number 46 of Sean Core. So when they stay two by two, how do you make up positions if you're farther back? That's what's hard. You try to make a third line go. Can't go to the inside because these guys are hugging the double yellow line. That third line is pretty dicey. You're better set just to ride around for a little bit. We saw a few people try to make some something happen up there. They really haven't seemed to get anything going. Part of this is the rule package. These, these cars are very, very equal with the uh, with the Arca Ilmore engines, the composite body cars. These composite body cars have a lot more drag than the old steel body cars. They punch a bigger hole in the air. It's hard to get away from each other. They can't get away from each other this evening. Holmes remains on the top side. His best finish so far this season, 10th at Nashville. He was sixth in points last year and third in the Scott Rookie Challenge. Jim, tell us more on Andy Sice. Well, you know, this is a uh, this is a really good story that the young man who built this car and the team car, the number six machine, in his two-bay boat repair shop in North Carolina has finished second here at Talladega. So I asked him, is that a feel-good story? He said, no, it's a proving the point story that anybody, given the time and effort and resources Chris Hauer has given him, can do what he can do on this racetrack. It's not a surprise he's running up there now. He said, I worked so hard at this race car. We are working very hard and running up to 10 ARCA races this year. Matter of fact, he's skipping the modified tour race at Stafford this weekend. He said, we really need to focus on the ARCA racing series. We want to be here as much and often as we can. In that race, guys, when he finished second, he started way back in 33rd. So determination and skill is showing here as Andy Sice is proving that the guy named Ryan Priest on the NASCAR Xfinity side, those modified drivers are pretty good, aren't they? Some great stories. Yeah, we've had a lot of modified drivers over the years excel up here at the top levels. Well, it continues to look like the start of this race, but at over 180 miles per hour at the Talladega Super Speedway and the general tire leaderboard, it's Brett Holmes and Michael Self going back and forth for the lead. Robaugh and Sice battling for third and fourth. Doza, Gerhard, Smith, Freed, Purdy, and Perkins, the top 10 in ARCA. They remain lined up side by side at 180 plus miles per hour from the Talladega Super Speedway. It's the General Tire 200. Thanks for joining us for a beautiful evening this, this evening and some really entertaining racing going so far. And right now, nobody can break away and gain any advantage. Riding along with Brett Holmes, the general tire on board, never letting off the throttle. Lap after lap after lap, just wide open, as is Michael Self, that 15 Sinclair car on the inside. What a thrill this must be for Brett Holmes. He has dozens of friends and family members here to see him, his best finish in his ARCA career, third at Salem a couple of years ago. And Michael Self has really been on a roll. In his 11 career starts, he has seven top five. So whenever he enters a race, he does well. But he finished the season last year with a win. He won the opener at Daytona. He was up for an all race at Nashville, finished fourth. He was leading the points after the first two, but he's on a partial schedule. He didn't race at Salem. And he also has eight Kane and West wins under his belt. Cody Robaugh and Andy Sice, good stories there, running in that second row for the moment. Cody had such a good run at going at Daytona, got taken out fairly early in the incident. Really felt like he was a contender for the win. They spent all this time rebuilding that car, and looks like they got it right. 
He was running up front here late last year in this race too. His best finish is eighth a couple of times. Running the partial schedule and hoping to do a few more this year. And then there's Bobby Gerhardt running in fifth right now in that black Lucas oil car. Nine super speedway wins. All of his wins. There he is. A third row on the bottom side. Last win, 2012 at Daytona. Third most super speedway wins in ARCA history. This is his 33rd start here at Talladega in the ARCA Racing Series. So Leilani with that incident earlier as she tried to avoid the 25 of her teammate Natalie Decker. But here she is right back up in the lead draft right behind the 18 of Riley Herbst. And that lead draft goes back 22 cars <laughs> deep separated by 1.2 seconds. Leilani is 19th right now. Remember these are composite bodies. This is the first year that the composite bodies have been required as we see Amy Sice pull to the outside. Taking a challenge for the lead up there. First year they've been required on the super speedways and they're pretty darn durable. Look at Brent Holmes dropping back. He got stuck in the middle with no help and he's dropping like a rock from the front all the way back into the teens. He might end up in 20 seconds. We're talking about 22 cars in the lead draft. That may be where he ends up. Michael Self moved in front. The row ball behind him, and there is Holmes still stuck in the middle, trying to find his place. He will tuck in there, but he ended up back in 11th. And up front, Gerhardt has moved his way up to third behind Robaw and Self who has led 16 of the 35 laps so far after starting from pole. See that black car on the outside, that's Andy Seiss, the 0-2. He's leading that line on the outside. Now Bobby Gerhardt pulls it the outside in front of the 0-2. Let's go back and find out how Self took control and then what happened to Brett Holmes. See the 0-2 of Andy Seiss just pulled at the outside and had a bunch of help. Brian Dozer, that white car right behind him. Zane Smith right behind him. They pulled out and just left him in the middle by himself. From 1st to 11th, just like that. Now trying to settle in and work his way back up to the front. He's on the top side right now. And after you've seen clean air and nobody in front of you, much as the uh, heartbeat increase as you go back there and see all that traffic in front of you and so many things that can go wrong yeah we and we've watched these cars it's hard to make much ground up because they're running side by side we haven't seen much much happen from the third lane so it's really hard to t make up any spots and brett holmes now as you mentioned back in the 11th 12th spot sice leads the top line he's seventh overall so it's the bottom line with self robot creed purdy lynn and lamastis right now as we go on board with gus dean we could hear him have to play with the throttle a little bit. We heard Brett Holmes earlier when he was battling for the lead, wide open all the way around. You can't quite do that when you're back in traffic like this because of the closure weight rate of these cars. Brian Doza, that white car, got stuck in the middle. Now he's going backwards. Watch that black 41 right behind Andy Sice trying to go three wide. He wants to get around Sice. Smith is trying to go to the front. He's tired of being patient, waiting in line. He's going to try to do it on his own, but I'm not sure that you can do it on your own here. Well, Andy Sice pulled up to block him. Now he's lost that momentum, and Brett Holmes goes by him as well as the 98 of Blaine Perkins. On board with Herbst. Running in 12th position right now with the Orca on board. Up front, it's Michael Self trying to win for the third time in his last four starts. Cody Robaugh, Sheldon Creed, and many more still have something to say. We are now past the halfway point in the ARCA Racing Series, presented by Menards from Talladega Super Speedway and the General Tire 200. Michael Self remains in front, but it is tight. Cody Robaugh now being challenged by Sheldon Creed going to the top side, and Creed's going to have a think about the lead, too. Three wide up front. 
Creed nosing just in front to try to take over from Self, but Self isn't ready to give it up yet. Michael Self had just enough room to get down in front of Cody Robaw, and that kept him from being stuck in the middle and going to the back. Nice move by Michael Self as he continues to battle for the lead. And look at that 23 car of Brett Holmes. He went from the lead to the 11th not long ago. Now he's back up, helping push Creed near the front. Always a dicey situation when you catch a lap car. They caught him in just the right place here, coming off turn two and all the way down the backstretch. Look at these guys trying to just jump in front of that lap car, the 06. So we were single file for a little while now. This is back the way it's been much of the race. Creed, the leader for the moment. Our fifth different leader in this race. It looks like the initial start of the race. They're just two by two by two. That's Holmes right behind him. And Cody Robaw hanging in there down there on the inside of that second row. Blaine Perkins in the 98 car, the auto park at four star fruit Chevy for Mason Mitchell Motorsports. He's in contention, running in fifth, another one of the teenagers. It really amazes me that the job these teenagers can come running a racetrack like this for the first time and staying up there in contention. Blaine Perkins doing a super job. It's not just a super speedway. Most of these young guys haven't done anything more than a mile until they get to Arkham. So Creed gives himself a little bit of a gap. How long will that last? Not long, I wouldn't think. <laughs> and there comes Robaw with some momentum. That's going to give Creed some momentum there as he lays back a little bit. He's got some good help from the 23 of Brett Holmes. See if that's enough to push him by Michael Self. So Self got it back for a moment, not for long. Creed pushed back in front. He's got Holmes behind him. So we've been talking about who didn't pit, who did pit. Jim, give us an update on strategy. 45. Two more laps is what the spotter just told driver Michael Self for the number 15 Sinclair Lubricants Toyota. Two more laps coming on lap 45. That's the end of the window for Brett Holmes, who has yet to pit in the car number 23. Both teams are cautioning their drivers. Keep an eye on the fuel gauge. We're getting closer, guys, but in two laps, expect the number 15 of Michael Self, who led all those laps to pit road under green. Yeah, for fuel. and Jim, the 23 of Brett Holmes is going to have to some way work his way to the inside. Remember, when these guys are going to pit, they're going to come off turn four wide open. Then they're going to have to get over to the left and not to cause an accident. So many times we see guys trying to pit under green flag conditions and causing an incident. Their spotters need to be go up and down the roof telling the other spotters, hey, we're coming in in two laps. Brett Holmes now is stuck in the middle again. And he's trying to get down to the bottom side. Yes, he needs to pit. Andy Sice also needs to pit soon. He was running at the front. Now he's back in 13th position. Yeah, I think the best thing for those guys to do is to get together and pit at the same time so they can come back out and have somebody to draft with. There's Sice, who now finds himself right in front of Brett Holmes. So Holmes was in a no-win situation. He had simply to give up the track position to get himself down to pit when he absolutely needs to. Now, Self, Holmes, Sice, all hoping for a caution right now. Oh, without a doubt. Michael Self needs to make sure he signals extremely well to the Cody Robot running behind him. And as soon as he comes off turn four, just move way over to the left out of the way so these guys can continue running at 180 miles an hour without, without having to back off for him, slowing down to come to pit road. So once they do pit, they have to hope the others, they need it to stay green then. They need it to stay green. Pit under green. And they need for those guys to have to stop again. I don't think we had enough caution laps really, Kevin, to make these guys that pitted on lap 20 have enough fuel to get to the end. We hear the 15 is going to come this time. He still continues to battle for the lead with Sheldon Creed. The 15 is Michael Self. He drops down, gets down there smoothly. See, and we are we... crashing in the back, and it's Brett Holmes who was trying to get to pit lane, possibly goes around, and there's the caution. Yeah, the 0-2 of Andy Sice and the 23 of Brett Holmes both were trying to get the left pit road. But, Kevin, there's all sorts of room down there. You don't have to be right next to the racetrack. This didn't have to happen. So Brett Holmes needed the caution, but unfortunately, he is the caution. That's going to be a real break for Michael Self because he can just dump a little bit of fuel, go back up on the racetrack without losing a lap. 
and then come in. He may be able to do his entire pit work and come back on the racetrack. So there's Self who stays out. But the question is, was he past the pit commit line? I thought he might have been past the line. It would have been close. But he is not pitting at the moment. So what's this do for Michael Self? Because he's just given all that track position up and he still needs service. Let's watch what happened first to Brett Holmes. Watch for the red car in the back. Oh, and somebody wiggled right in front of him. Well, that's a zero two of Andy Seiss, who's coming to pit road. He's on the brakes. You saw Michael Self definitely went by the commitment line on pit road. He had the option, though, of just riding down pit road at pit road speed and rejoining the racetrack if he wanted to. Okay. And yeah, Seiss in that same situation, too, needed to pit. But there's so much room down there. Kevin, there's 60 feet the way to the left. left of those cars. Do like Michael Self, he moved yeah. way over when he came off of turn four. So unfortunate. What a good day going to waste for the Alabama native. Grew up around here. Brett Holmes into the wall hard again for the second year in a row at Talladega. Caution number three. By where Brett's car is positioned, as we see him getting out of the car, that's a great sign right there. They may keep pit road closed until they're able to to move the 23 car from the entrance to pit road. You can see Brett surveying the damage. So hopefully Michael Self has enough fuel to ride around here on the caution laps. So Holmes is out, appears to be okay. Pits are closed for a moment. We'll be back with critical pit stops. Past the halfway point, Sheldon Creed is the leader in ARCA at Talladega Super Speedway. Under caution at Talladega Super Speedway in ARCA with Sheldon Creed out front. Caution number three, heavy impact for Brett Holmes. He's out of the car and looks to be okay. All right, past the midpoint, it's time for our Protect Plus mid-race recap. This is the theme of the evening, side-by-side -side racing. This is the start, though, where you expect it. <laughs> yeah, Michael Self, Chase Purdy. And we've seen him run side-by-side -side, lap after lap after lap. They actually are more strong out at the start than they have been most of the race here. <laughs> so Self and Purdy battling in the early going. A little bit of contact right there. Blaine Perkins, the 98, makes contact with Josh Williams in the sixth, right in front of Gus Dean. And then a little later on, Bo Lamassis in the 54 going up. Almost turned around Michael Self. They hang on to it. They get into it just barely with Joe Graff Jr. in the 77 big time Ford. Michael Self, the 15 car, jumps out to the outside to take the lead from Chase Purdy in the 8 car. Natalie Decker had been running up near the front much of the race. Got shuffled a little further back, though. And then Decker caught up in a mess. Yeah, I think the inside line lost a little bit of momentum for some reason. I think she got a little bit of nudge from behind, and that put her in the outside wall. Pretty hard contact right here. And Decker is out of the race, but she has been checked, cleared, and released from the infield care center. And then more problems. This just a moment ago that led to our third caution. Brett Holmes and Andy Sice were both trying to get down to pit road. They made contact. And Holmes, who had led in this race two different times for six laps, out. We talked about it before these green flag pit stops even started. How much room there was to get by the 0-2 of Andy Sice, the 23. We're fighting for position. So this was right after that happened. The 15 had already ducked to pit road. Okay, he was the leader. But Self was told that pit road was closed, but running out of fuel, so he has to come in and top off, which is allowed. So Michael Self went from leading this race to the caution coming out just barely at the wrong time. Yeah, and he'll have to restart the race from the longest line, the tail end of the longest line, so he's gonna have a lot of work to do. Well, he was already running back in 20th position after he did a pass through the pit lane and got back in line. So Sheldon Creed is the current leader, one of five different leaders. He's led 10 laps, Self has led 21, Zane Smith has led eight, 
home six before the crash. Chase Purdy has led one time for four laps. We've had a number of caution laps. Remember, the majority of the field pitted back on lap number 20. I really think that if I'm the crew chief, I want to bring, in, bring my guy in, put a little bit of fuel in that car because you never know when we're going to have multiple overtimes here, Kevin. So I want to make sure I have enough fuel, not only to get to lap 76, but beyond that. Well, we're just getting started this weekend here at Talladega. Sunday, the NASCAR Monster Energy Cup Series is here for the Geico 500 as Kyle Busch looks for his fourth straight win. Catch all the action starting at 1.30 Eastern on Fox or stream it live on Fox Sports Go. They had a scary one in practice today. They sure did. Jamie McMurray went upside down side over side a number of times I was happy to see him climbing mm -hmm. out and talking to Vince Welch after that crash there's Sheldon Creed who has been knocking on the door it seems like since he first entered this series for his first <laughs> win he is in position to get it done again here today the championship leader has finished third second and third in the three races this season. Pit road is going to be open. Creed pitted on lap 20. Robaw running in second, pitted on lap 13. So there's no question that Robaw has to come. And it seems like a pretty no brainer too for Creed, but the yellow laps for fuel mileage are starting to pile up. Will anybody stay out that went on 20, hoping for a lot more? Maybe somebody in the back that's not really a contender well I, I don't see the advantage to it other than maybe a little bit of track position but then you're really painting yourself into a box and if this th thing was to go overtime and I'm not sure even with the caution laps we've had I'm not sure we've had enough caution laps to uh, with 13 caution laps to get them in their window to make it from lap 20 no you need a lot more there's no doubt that you're not there yet because we've heard it's somewhere between it's a big gap 42 to 50 well, some are going to stay out, but the leader, Sheldon Creed, is coming down. He'll take Robaw with him. Purdy as well. I think Perkins is one of those that stayed out. Jim, take it away. Sheldon Creed being told 4,000 second gear by his spotter, Lauren Rainier, do not slide the tires. They elect to do only fuel, as does Robaw, the Grant County Mulch number seven machine. Robo actually pitted on lap 13 under the first caution. This is a last pit stop, jam it full of fuel for the driver who came down pit road in second position in this seven. So fuel only the call of the day for both Green and Robo here on pit road. A lot of extra time there trying to put fuel in the seven of Cody Robo. Blaine Perkins did stay out. So did Sean Core and some others as well. So some fast cars are going to be trying to make their way through traffic. This is going to be good. Restart coming up with 25 to go from Talladega in the ARCA Racing Series. It's dusk at Talladega Super Speedway. Under caution number three, most of the field has just stopped, including Chase Purdy. What happened, Jim? He just came in a second time. Well, guys, he pitted with everybody else under caution for fuel. As the crew member was going to get the tear off off the front windshield, Chase thought that was a signal to go. So he left before they had all the fuel in the number eight Bama Buggies machine. His crew chief just said, hey, we got to come back down pit road anyway. Let's put four tires on. We know we've got to come back to pit road to pack the car full. So he's got four fresh general tire radials under the eight car. Should be fun to watch coming through here. And he was second off pit road right behind Sheldon Creed, the top six did not pit they all stopped at lap 20 or in the case of joe graff jr on lap 22. so blaine perkins is the leader and there are a lot of drivers up front looking to get their very first win i know someone that can speak to getting their first <laughs> win in a series at this track yeah it's, pretty, it's phil parsons it's pretty unbelievable and let's go back to the wayback machine oh how about that that's me trying to hold off Bobby Allison in the 12 car, Jeff O'Dine in the Levi Garrett number five. What a big day that was for, for me and my family, for sure. Well, you beat some heavyweights. Bobby Allison finishes second, then Jeffrey Bodine, Terry Labonte, Ken Schrader is here. 
Sterling Marlin, Bill Elliott, Kyle Petty, Dale Earnhardt, and Rusty Wallace, the top ten. I think I looked, there were 11 Hall of Famers in that race. Should be 12. What? <laughs> I mean, eventually there will be 12 or 13 or 15 or whatever. It just may not be. It may not be me. We're going to hold out hope. <laughs> All right. Let's get back at it now. Brett Holmes, by the way, uh, who hit the wall hard to cause this caution, is okay. Checked, cleared, and released. So, again, top six are going to hope to make it. And Jim has more on pit lane. Well, Sean Core has six starts here at Talladega. He also got a brand new race car. This car was finished literally here at the racetrack. The car that will start inside our front row. Sean Core has done well at Daytona. Again, six races of experience here at Talladega. We'll see what he can do from the inside of the Empire Racing number 46 machine. Well, Blaine Perkins is the leader. He chooses the outside, and this is his first super speedway race, although he does have a decent amount of testing here last fall and at Daytona. Remember, these teams that pitted on lap 20 are going to have to go 56 laps if we don't go overtime. We know that the 15 of Michael Self had to come to pit road under the caution before it was open around lap 49 or 50 because he was out of fuel. Now, how and he had the the all those caution laps as well. So I think it's going to be very iffy for these for these drivers to make it on fuel. On board Leilani Munter in the vegan strong car. Riley Herbst with the Oracle on board. Gustine right now running in the fourth spot. He's one of those drivers and teams that pitted back on lap number 20, holding his breath that he has enough fuel to get to the end. So Bo Lamastis and Sheldon Creed back there in the seventh and eighth positions, they just pitted. So they may be in the best position, especially if we see a lot of green laps up front. I always love this call. I need you to be fast, keep them behind you, but save fuel. <laughs> well, the leader really can't save fuel because he pretty much has to run wide open or he'll get run over. And you can't breathe it here. You are flat all the way around. Back to green. Great jump for Blaine Perkins from the high line. He's going to take Max Tolman with him. Sean Kaur fighting back on the bottom side, getting a push from Gus Dean. Look at Josh Williams at that number six car in his first ARCA start in a couple of years. The Star Bright, Star Tron Chevrolet for our motorsports. What a big moment for that young man, Blaine Perkins. First time ever on a super speedway here and in the lead with about 22 laps to go. Got a couple cars lined up in the outside. It looked like the eight of Chase Purdy and the 15 were lined up in the outside. Michael Self, time to go now. With just over 20 laps to go. Perkins did debut last year at Kentucky, finished ninth. That was his first track ever over a mile. Remember, he's running for Mason Mitchell Motorsports. So this is his second ARCA race. Gus Dean was running for that team in his second ARCA <laughs> race when he won his first here two years ago. A couple parallels right there. See the outside line trying to form up, trying to get some momentum. That's Max Tolman, the yellow and black number 78, leading that outside pack. Got a bunch of good cars pushing and shoving behind him. Brandon Lynn, the black and blue number 55, is right behind the 78. Zane Smith, the 41, lined up behind the Lynn. So back there looking for Michael Self. He's running in the 15th position. That green and white Sinclair car is on the top side right now, trying to make his way back, starting at the tail end of this group. The pole sitter, he's led five different times, 21 laps, and how many others that he was side by side for the lead up front. He's got another fast car though right behind him. That's to his benefit with Chase Purdy, who had to come in and top off during that last yellow flag. Ooh, season. caution. So we've got a caution again. That's certainly going to help the teams that pitted on lap number 20. Is that Andy Sice? Looks like Andy Sice, the 0-2, has made some contact with the outside safer barrier. So those that did not come in, this works to their benefit. Without a doubt. Yeah, more, more caution laps helps, especially if the driver can shut the engine off and conserve fuel during these caution laps. 
So they'll try to save now so they can race when we get back to green. Caution number four. 18-year-old Blaine Perkins in his first super speedway race is in front, but he's got veterans like Sean Core right behind him. Tomorrow, it's a doubleheader on FS1. All contenders, first the Diamondbacks take on Bryce Harper and the Nationals at 4 Eastern. Then Aaron Judge and the Yankees battle Mike Trout and the Angels at 8 Eastern. It all happens tomorrow on FS1 or streaming live on Fox Sports Go. Back at Talladega under caution number four, Blaine Perkins, the 98 car, the 18-year-old, is our leader. And Jim is with his crew chief now. Yeah, Mark Setzer is here. I asked you about 10 laps ago. I said, how good are you? He said, we're good on fuel. We're not coming back in. How big of a help is this caution? Every caution lap is going to help us now, but this Mason Mission Motorsports Chevrolet has really been good. This is the opportunity we've really been wanting because our car's really been good out front, and I think it showed it there, and we're hoping to keep it up the rest of the race. What have you been able to tell this young man in just his second ARCA race as well as your spotter, Kevin Hamlin, who works on Sundays with Alex Bowman? Kevin Hamlin's doing all the work right now. I've... Uh, me and all these guys have done our work back in the shop. This is in Kevin Hamlin's and Blaine, uh, Blaine's hands right now. We wish them well again. They won here two years ago. As you guys said, Gustina just to his second start went to victory lane with this Mesa Mitchell Motorsports team. Yeah, there are parallels, and let's revisit that. Gus Dean a couple of years ago in just his second career start getting it done at Talladega. There's Josh Williams, who's back in the series for the first time in a couple of years here today. Late caution right there. Dustin Knowles, the 14 car, into the outside wall. And it was getting dark, and it was determined that Dean was just barely in front. So, yes, Arca does finish under the checkers, unless it's a track that doesn't have lights, <laughs> and it's getting dark. So that potentially could come into play at some point tonight, a long ways away from now. So now Blaine Perkins trying to duplicate that for Mason Mitchell motorsports max tolman also would be happy to to jump in that category as well he's in the 78 for mason mitchell finished sixth in his first start at daytona earlier this year all right jim tell us more of what you're learning on pit road well as soon as i got off the ladder for mark sets for the crew chief on a race leader his team cars crew chief doug richard climbed up the ladder for the 78 crew with tolman he said i don't know if we have enough fuel we need to go through our numbers again they are crunching numbers together now in the pit box with mark sets the race leaders looking over their numbers the 78 team may not have enough fuel for some reason so tolman may be on borrowed time here starting inside row three i'm not a crew chief I'm certainly not good at math. But it <laughs> sure seems to me, from everything we've been told from the history of this race, that it's going to be really tough to go 56 laps without a whole bunch of caution. Well, remember those crew chiefs, though, that stopped on lap 20, got a good fuel mileage check. They knew how much fuel that car took on lap 20. They knew how many pace laps they had, how many caution laps in that first 20. So th those engineers down there are pretty sharp in the crew chiefs. So they must have a more than more than reasonable thought that they can make it to the end here to stay out would you be more comfortable if you were running in that second row rather than the leader blaine perkins hard to, to dictate running second or third but how much would that save you over the length of a long run i, I think it would definitely save because we know the guys out front are going to have to run wide open all the way around here and the guys that that can pedal the throttle a little bit will save a little bit of fuel but uh, again those crew chiefs down there they they have a good feel for it they know what they did in practice for fuel mileage they know more importantly they know what they did in this race through lap 20. now here's the deal we're talking all this about fuel and who can make it win the race without stopping a second time and then as we watch on board with riley herbst who has moved his way up to eight but sheldon creed look at him right there in third and fuel is not a concern that's the driver to watch as we go back to green perkins on the bottom side core on the top side row two on the bottom is creed dean to his top side tolman and brandon lynn in row number three williams herbst smith and munter the top 10 going again at talladega Good line formed up on the outside, led by Sean Corr. Has Gus Dean, the 32 Greek car, right behind him. 
There's Creed you mentioned inside second row the 28 and we know he has enough fuel for as many overtimes as we have to go. Fanning out the three wide back in about row number five. Look at all the damage back there in the vegan strong car for Leilani Munter who was in the top 10 but she's going to have a hard time keeping up the pace. She can just get somebody behind her pushing and have somebody in front of her pulling. She'll be fine. See Joe Graff Jr. The 77 looks like he lost her draft to the outside. He's going to try to duck in in front of Leilani. Where Cody Robaugh was running up at the front. We saw him there in the number seven. Grant County Mulch car trying to work his way back up. He's running in 17th right now. Sheldon Creed has made his way up to the second spot. See him moving around the outside of the 98 for the lead. Side by side. Perkins, 18 years old. Creed, a 20-year-old veteran on the top side, going for the lead at Talladega. You know, there hasn't been a whole lot of room between these cars, Kevin, but there's even less now. We're in about 15 laps to go here. Now it's going to really get good, and they are still side by side, seven or eight rows deep. Teammates on the inside, the 98 of Perkins, the 78 of Tolman. That's Mason Mitchell Motorsports. MDM with Creed on the top side. He tries to come down, maybe get a little bit of a side draft, see if that will be enough to push him to the front. Not going to get it done here. Can Core help him on the top side? Look at Michael Self, too, back in the mix. Running inside the top 10 on the bottom line. He's fifth row on the inside. Just looking for some space. Ooh, looks like the 78 of Joe Graff got a little bit of a bump and he got sideways for a moment. Herbst is ninth. So Self, who dominated this race in the early going, is just to his bottom. There's Zane Smith in the 41. You know, he's got a good car as well. You hear Zane having to pedal the throttle a little bit. Out of this top 12, almost all of them forget strategy or legitimate cars, all fast enough to win this race. Oh, absolutely. We've, we've all seen every one of these cars up front at one time or another. Lynn got just a little bit out of sorts and below the double yellow line for just a moment in that number 55 black and blue car. Remember the very top of the show said, how do you get to them? You have to survive. We're just outside of 10 laps to go with 13 laps to go. We still have a long way to go and a lot more survival yet. As Creed pulls out front. Core gives him the push he needs. And Creed can get down to the bottom. Sheldon Creed leading at Talladega looking for his first Arca win. Now he just needs to maneuver, move to the inside. Pull that line a little bit. If they get in front of the outside line, pull back to the outside. Just try to stay in front of whichever line that has a little bit of momentum. The top line's got a good run now. Gus Dean, third on the top line. Sean Core in the Petty Blue 46 is in front of him. Got to be careful to get too much out in front here. You don't want those guys to have a lot of momentum when they get to you, and you or you won't be able to get in front of them. So now Creed is driving much of this race out of his mirrors, right? About 90% and using his spotter as well. So he's up high right now. Keeps Core behind him, keeping an eye on Perkins in the black 98 on the bottom side. When we come back, we're going to be inside the final 10. Get good at Talladega in Arca on FS1. These are not the pace laps. We're inside the final 10 laps of the General Tire 200 from Talladega Super Speedway. Thanks for joining us with Phil Parsons. I'm Kevin Lee. Jim Trado is on pit road. So we saw Blaine Perkins go to the front for a moment. Sheldon Creed got it back. Perkins has fallen back a couple of spots. So in second right now, it's Brandon Lynn battling now with Max Tolman coming on the top side and Tolman has looked really fast in the last few laps. Yeah, that 78 car of Tolman has been really fast. He's the one that pushed the 28 of Creed by his teammate, the 98. Now the 98 is pushing the 78 on the high side. Tolman is 20 years old from Chester Springs, Pennsylvania. 
Just his second career start. He finished sixth in Daytona, and he's got a chance to win here at Talladega side by side with Sheldon Creed for the lead. Coming down to seven laps to go here. Crew chiefs holding their breath for another seven laps that these cars have enough fuel to get to the end. And score Tolman the leader at the line. First time he's led. Second row, it's Perkins on the top side. Lynn on the bottom side. And Zane Smith is down there on the bottom side, pushing third in line. Don't forget about Michael Self. Green and white car, fourth in line on the bottom side. Cody Roboff pulls to the outside. A little bit of help from Joe Graff Jr. When we watch this, let's get an update on the 15 from Jim. Michael Self survived a late race accident at Daytona by staying on the bottom line in that number 15 machine. He just reported a lap and a half ago, though. No matter what he's doing, the water temperature continues to rise. So as he's tucked in and drafted his way to this position, that water gauge is now an issue and a concern for the driver in the 15. And around goes Leilani Mooter. Caution with six to go. Leilani was still even with that damage. That veganstrong.com Toyota was still up in this lead draft. But she already had a lot of damage, so I'm sure that car was a handful. And that likely will end it for Munter. I would not be surprised if there was some contact. There's been a whole bunch of pushing and shoving ever since our last restart. So we're going to be close now down to just a one-lap shootout, whether it's in regulation or overtime. With six to go, Max Tolman is the leader. And at the line, the next last time by, he led by one thousandth <laughs> of a second on Sheldon Creed. Blaine Perkins is third, Brandon Lynn fourth, Zane Smith fifth, then Sean Core and Michael Self. Let's watch again. There's Mooter from the bottom line going around and fortunately didn't take anyone else. Yeah, quite possibly got a little bit of a bump from behind. Running along with it right here. She's probably she's gonna have to back off, and when she did, she probably got bumped from behind. She ran up on the back bumper of Bola Mastis and had to back off a little bit. So another pretty solid race for Leilanti Munter is unfortunately going to end early. All right. One, maybe two, no more than three laps of green flag racing to go to decide the winner from Talladega. A series only five races old has already enjoyed a season's worth of drama. From historic wins to major explosions, every trip down the strip begins another NHRA storyline. From one of the most unique circle tracks, stick around for the stampede of more than 40,000 horses as NHRA qualifying four wide style comes your way next from Charlotte, North Carolina. Thank you, Dave. Looking forward to that. That's right after we're done. Really kicks off just a huge month in motorsport in May. Everywhere, certainly in Charlotte. And Arca will be back in Charlotte uh, just under a month from now. Yeah. Right after Coca-Cola yeah. 600 qualifying. Really excited about Arca coming back to Charlotte. Uh, and I'll tell you, I, I've been to the four wide over here at the Speedway. And uh, 40,000 horsepower at one time. It's unbelievable. Talk about ground shaking. There may be some ground shaking here in the final few laps. We are set for a one, two, three lap shootout. No word yet as to when we are going back green, but we are in the final few laps. Four to go under caution for Leilani Munter. She went to pit road and is still back out on the track, although she is a lap down at this point, but Munter will try to finish this race. We have 23 on the lead lap, and we've got about a dozen plus cars that have really 20 cars that have been running the same speeds. Andy Sice was able to get the free pass here, so he will be back in contention for a, for a good finish. Not a whole lot of time to do it, but uh, he will be back on the lead lap for this restart. We're just getting started at Talladega this weekend. So much more coming up. This is what's on the menu for tomorrow morning here on FS1. Xfinity qualifying at 11 a.m. That's Eastern time, 10 o'clock local time. And Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series qualifying at 1 o'clock. That's on Fox. And the Xfinity race also on Fox tomorrow. The Cup race is going to be on Fox on Sunday. And what a big weekend. And the weather is perfect in Talladega. Absolutely perfect, just like today. Tomorrow, by the way, for the Xfinity race, 
That's the driver's <laughs> broadcast where people like you, Phil, try to put people like me out of a job. No, 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 Kevin no. Kevin Harvick no. in the anchor chair. Oh, no, right? yeah, he did a great job last year. All those guys did a super job. Looking forward to that. All right, Jim, tell, you what, uh, tell us what you know about the leader, Max Tolman. They are wearing out the radio deciding what lane to start on. I can tell you that they thought initially their teammate would be behind them on the restart, but Blaine Perkins now has shuffled away from that fourth starting spot. Tolman, however, overruled the team, said, I want to start on the outside. I think I have a better chance there. And Sheldon Creed also wanted the outside. So there's something about that outside groove these teams have learned. One last point about Tolman. He was reminded, hey, the guy behind you, Sean Core, he pushed us to the front. He's got a really good car. Let's get with him and go to the front and try to get a great restart on the top. Because if we started on the bottom and we don't get a good restart, we're not looking at Victor Lane. Now, I think there are a few probably hoping that we see the checkers here after this next green flag, including the 78 there of Max Tolman because he last pitted on lap 20. Blaine Perkins on the bottom side in row two also pitted on lap 20 and Sean Core on lap 20. All the others up front, no concern at all. Yeah, we're going to restart with two laps to go here. Want to make sure that there's fuel up in the in the throttle body here. Don't run out of fuel right here on this start. We've had a lot of caution laps since those guys pitted on lap number 20. If we can just go the scheduled distance, they, they have a good shot at it. So this becomes a natural green-white checkered finish into the restart zone two laps to go in arca from talladega tolman and creed up front and creed hits the line first big wide turn for tolman is going to lose a lot of spots and that's going to impact the top line so blaine perkins is now in second look who's third and fourth zane smith and the 15 of Michael Self. I wonder if that 78 car burped a little bit, being low on fuel when he restarted from the outside. He's struggling back there on the third line. Tolman has fallen way back. So his only hope, I think, is another caution to reset it. It's Creed. It's Perkins. 1-2. Brandon Lynn also up there. But that's Zane Smith now in third, Michael Self in fourth, as we hit the white flag. One to go, 2.66 miles from Talladega. Who's gonna make the move first? Is anyone gonna be able to make a move on Sheldon Creed? Self's got some momentum. And we have a car around, it's Doza into the wall. Caution, and we will go to overtime. No, we stay green, we stay green. I think we can stay green. That car was well out of the way over in turn two. It is, so we will race to the finish. Four in the mix right now. Creed trying to hold up Perkins. Oh, trouble! Now they'll crash hard. The big one in Talladega is on the final lap. Will we stay green or go white? It's green for the moment. Creed, Perkins, and we do go to caution. The 28 crew waiting and hoping that he got to the line before the caution came out, but this was a big one in the safety personnel needs to be dispatched. Good to see that winning that down on Chase Purdy's car. Look at all the damage to that eight cars. You see him climb out. That's Bola Mastis, the 54, nosed into the side of the eight of Chase Purdy. Hard, hard hits there. That is a destroyed race car that will bring out the red flag. So we had two incidents on the white flag lap as we see Dave Mater rolling down pit lane with some damage. And as you accurately called it, Phil, that first one was not going to be a factor. So that was going to allow them to finish. But the second, too heavy a damage. You're going to have the cool down lap, but maybe just as importantly, you need to make sure that nobody's hurt. Yeah, I, I looked out the, out the window Kevin and they were three wide and there was not an inch between all three cars. There's Brian Doza. Brian Doza is the one that got out of shape over in turns one and two on the white flag lap. So right now it's Sheldon Creed, Blaine Perkins, Zane Smith, 
Michael Self, Sean Core. That's the top five. Josh Williams is sixth. Now that's an unofficial order, so we'll set that in a moment. But here is what happened to Doza going around first with Joe Graff Jr. behind him. Yeah, they were just tight racing there. I, I told there was nobody giving any room there. Just a slight contact to the back of Doza, and around he went. There's another view of it right there. You see, you see the gap between the six of Josh Williams and the 57. He probably got out of the throttle. We, he saw Leilani and Munter down on the bottom of the racetrack. Joe got into him just a little bit. Now here's the heavier hit that brought out the caution. Look at that three. There's that three wide racing with no room at all. So Robot took pretty big damage there too. Lamastis is in the 40, 54 Crosley for David Gilliland racing. And then the Bama Buggies, number eight for Chase Purdy. Let's see who else might've been impacted. Gus Dean right in the middle, maybe took a little bit of contact. It's like Josh Williams got by. He was on the very bottom of the racetrack. So unfortunately, as is usually the case at a plate track, a lot of destroyed race cars. Kind of reminiscent of Daytona. We thought we were coming down for the checkered flag and had an incident on the very last lap. We had a lot of entertainment in the final stages of that race, and it took us several tries, and I think about an hour and 20 minutes or so to get the last lap done. <laughs> well, Doza's gonna try to get repaired and get back out there. And they sit under the red. So I can't swear to the running order right now because I think it's just where they've stopped. So the ARC officials will double check where everyone should be. But Sheldon Creed was out front. That we remember and we'll sort it coming up in just a moment. And we'll try again for our first official go at overtime in the ARCA Racing Series presented by Menards from Talladega. Sunday, NHRA roars into Charlotte for all the heart-pounding thrills of four-wide racing. Don't miss a moment of the action as Steve Torrance looks to strengthen his lead in the Top Fuel Series. It all starts Sunday at 6 Eastern on FS1. We're streaming live on Fox Sports Go. Qualifying is coming up after we're done tonight, but it will start on time in about five minutes on FS2. So on time in five minutes, and then we'll join them when we're done here just a little bit. So red flag at Talladega. This is caution number six. We are headed to overtime after a pair of incidents and one big one on the white flag lap. Sheldon Creed is in front. This is race number four of 2018, the second and final super speedway race. And still to come, a few weeks off, then May 20th at Toledo Speedway. Ark is backyard, and then our next race on FS1 is coming up Coca-Cola 600 weekend. Yeah, how about a quick turnaround? May 20th in Toledo, May 24th here in Charlotte. Some great racetracks, such a diverse schedule here. Dirt track races, you see short tracks, super speedways, intermediate tracks. Always look forward to going to Pocono, MIS, and love that short track racing and the diversity. That's what really stands out with the ARCA Racing Series. And as mentioned, Charlotte is back on the ARCA schedule. That's going to be after Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series qualifying, so that's a big night at Charlotte Motor Speedway, live on FS1 at nine o'clock Eastern, kicking off the biggest weekend in motorsports. Absolutely, what a great, uh, great time it is to be around the Charlotte area. Got the Monster Energy Cup Series All-Star Race the weekend before that, the Truck Series Race. And we come back with the ARCA Race, the Xfinity Race, and the Coca-Cola 600. Camping World Truck Series has had a little break. You guys are back at it next weekend? We are, yeah. Looking forward to going to Dover. We're going to do three three in a row, Dover, then uh, Kansas the week after that, and then, then here at Charlotte during All-Star Weekend. So we continue to sit under the red flag for the cleanup. We've had a couple of big hits in this one. And we're gonna 
very possibly have a first-time winner. You look at those that are up at the front, Sheldon Creed seemingly has knocked on the door a half a dozen times at least, and he's finished uh, this season, what, second, third, and third so far. Uh, yeah, second, third, and third, his three races. Blaine Perkins, just 18 years old, his first super speedway race. Zane Smith does have a win. Michael Self has a couple. Sean Core doesn't have a win. Josh Williams hasn't raced in ARCA for a couple of years, but he has two. Well, let's find out more about what it's going to take for Sheldon Creed, Jim. Looking after that win number one, as crew chief Jeff Stankiewicz has agreed to a quick interview here. You were very frustrated as the caution came out here, knowing you had the car in the lead. Is your fuel situation okay, and what are you so frustrated about? Yeah, our fuel si situation's good. We came and topped off earlier, so we're plenty good. I just frustrated we went through this at Daytona, uh, had multiple restarts, wrecked a lot of cars, wound up finishing third, but you know, then we go to the race last week, and we had a car wreck in turn two on the last lap, and they finished the race. So just very inconsistent right there. Uh, don't like that. We were coming through the trial to the checkered, and they could have just thrown the checkered. It would have been no different than throwing the caution to get the safety cars out there to them. They still would have had to cross the line regardless. So don't agree with that, but it is what it is. So Sheldon's done a great job. Uh, just hoping to stay out front. That 41 is Zane, our teammate. He's really fast by himself, so he's going to be tough to beat, I think. So we're just going to have to work both lanes and get a good restart here. I'm just going to bring that up. I, he I heard your spotter, Laura Muneer, telling your driver, once you're out front, work both lanes. That's a lot for this young 20-year-old to figure out here. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of work out there, but uh, Sheldon's done a really good job. He's matured a lot over the last year, and uh, if he can just keep doing what he's done so far this year, I think we'll have a good shot at winning this championship. It's just going to be about consistency, and he's showing that right now, so we just got to keep it going. Point leader, top three finishes in the first three races, looking for a win here at Talladega after that third-place run, as Jeff talked about, in overtime at Daytona to start our season. Thank you, Jim. There's a good sign. The red has been lifted. We are rolling again. It will be a one lap shootout the top three all between 18 to 20 years old <laughs> and, and michael self is uh the old man of the group as the 78 comes to a stop probably out, i would think possibly out of gas he's one of the guys that pitted back on lap, lap number 20. he really struggled on that last restart it, it made me think that maybe that thing coughed for a little bit of fuel and uh star for a little bit of fuel we're hearing that he was planning to come down pit road because he'd lost a number of positions on the racetrack, but uh, there they got it refired. Obviously had enough fuel to refire that and hopefully can make it to pit road. Tolman has been fast at times here today. 20 year old from Pennsylvania in the yourpal.com Chevrolet for Mason Mitchell Motorsports. I mentioned Michael Self. He's still, I think, a very young man, but 27. He's almost a generation older than some of these young guys like Riley Herbst. He's battled in the seventh position in the Joe Gibbs racing car. Season hasn't started, I'm sure, the way Riley Herbst would like. He battled for wins all last season. He's finished uh, 10th, 13th, 6th in the three races so far this year. Did you see the damage on Cody Robaugh's car? There's no windshield in that car. He was one of those caught up in this most recent crash. They have not given the field one to go yet. The 98 of Blaine Perkins is doing his best to try to save some fuel. The 78 does make it to pit road, Jim. Yeah, they had to pit, guys. What they did is exactly what you expected. They suspected, Phil, they had a fuel pickup issue on that last restart. He climbed the hill. That's when they lost fuel pressure. So they thought, you know what, we can't risk it here with this red flag and the amazing laps that may still happen we need to come to pit road and lose all that track position in the 78 so Tellman brings it to pit road they told him not to slide the tires check the clearance on the fenders and away they went to try to salvage something here a win well you never know long shot for sure for this team but they had to pit with that low fuel situation meanwhile right after we're done we'll join nhra four wide qualifying from charlotte but that is airing right now on fs2 so if you're looking for NHRA qualifying, it's on FS2. Could be a fuel issue for Blaine Perkins in the 98. You see him switching the car back and forth. He was down on the flat to try to make sure that that fuel stayed by the pickup. Now he's going to move back up on the racetrack. That car is more liable to run out of gas on the caution than it is under green because of where the fuel will slosh down to the left side of the fuel cell. Well, we suspected if there was any overtime, it was going to be very difficult for those who made their stop on lap 20 to make it the rest of the way. And Perkins in the 98 there is in that 
category. So is Sean Kaur. So is Josh Williams and Gus Dean. One to go at the line. Race number four of the season. And here's what we've had so far, starting with Daytona and multiple tries to get that one finished. And Michael Self winning for Venturini. And in Nashville, it was an MDM sweep of the podium with Zane Smith getting his first win. And Christian Eckes also became a first-time winner at Salem in a great battle with Chandler Smith towards the end of the race. That 15-year-old has been fast. He's won two poles already this season. Yeah, it sure has been fast. See the 98, Lane Perkins weaving that car back and forth. Well, I said it quite some time ago that it appeared to me that Sheldon Creed, because of fuel and because of how strong the car has been, is the favorite. Any disagreement here? You got another pick? No, I, I, I like Sheldon Creed. And remember, ARCA rules are a little bit different than NASCAR rules. When the caution flag is displayed after the white is displayed, we will only have a one lap overtime. This is not going to be a green-white checker. The green and the white flags will be displayed at the same time. And darkness is not an issue yet. So at some point, that could be a factor, and they would say the next flag ends the race. But we're not close to that yet. Oh, and you wonder how that sun, though, can be an impact in driver's eyes, though, as it starts to set. I think the sun's plenty out of the way right now. We just need to run one green, clean green lap here. Well, let's see who we got here. Watching for the pace car to duck down. Sheldon Creed on the bottom side in that white 28. Blaine Perkins, the black 98 car on the top side. Michael Self is right behind him in the green and white car, number 15 in row two. And Zane Smith has been quick all day. If that 98 car runs out of gas, it could cause some big problems. So the bottom line might be the place to go. And they get the early jump back to green. One to go at Talladega and Arca. And Creed has the early advantage. See, the 98 didn't go out of gas. Self trying to get around on the top side. He needs some help. Josh Williams there with him. He's in trouble. Zane Smith has momentum. He'll try to duck upside. Core will come with him. Remember, Jeff Stanker was saying that 41 car, their teammate is really fast. Looking three wide down the back stretch. Smith, and then Herbst goes around. Big contact, taking Josh Williams with him. Caution. Overtime number two is coming. Look at the damage on Sean Core's car. That's two races in a row. They get to the last lap with that 46 car and ended up wadded up. Zane Smith is the leader. And at the moment, the number 77, Joe Graff Jr., the 19-year-old from New Jersey, is second. Creed is third. What a start for Zane Smith. Michael Self is still there in the mix. So that helped his cause because, as you said, top line with a car running out of fuel, the top line didn't have any hope. He got down best he can, and they get one more chance at it for row number two. Herbst had heavy contact. Let's watch again. See, Herbst moves to the inside of Sheldon Creed. Here comes Joe Graff. Looks like there was contact between the 28 of Creed and the 18 of Herbst, and it turned Herbst right into the path of Sean Core in the 46. So Creed didn't get going very well. There goes Ryler Herbst down the inside. Creed pulls over to try to block. Looks like Creed caught Riley Herbst in the right rear corner and it turned him dead right. So Creed looked like he didn't have anyone directly pushing him as Herbst tried to go to the bottom side and Core was on his high side. And just caught his right rear. So the frustration continues for Riley Herbst. Heavy damage. Sean Core able to make it to the ambulance on his under his own power. Good to see for the Goshen, New York native. Empire Racing. 
Herb still under power. Remember the 77 of Joe Graff Jr. that we are currently showing in the second spot. He pitted on lap number 22, only two laps later than than the two Mason Mitchell cars that have both run out of fuel. And how about this, Joe Graff Jr.? I don't know when he found out, but we didn't find out until I think it was yesterday morning that he was going to be in this race. He had six races scheduled this season for Chad Bryant Racing, and this was a late addition. Yeah, I talked to Chad Bryant earlier in the week, and they weren't they weren't sure that they had anything going. Then, as you mentioned, at the last moment, Joe Graff Jr. agreed to increase the schedule, and right now it's looking pretty good. Yes, it is. He's done a couple so far. 17th at Nashville, 11th at Salem. He's going to be a freshman at NYU next fall, studying business and sports media and management. So he can become an executive and hire and fire people like you and me. <laughs> That's right. Remember, this is the former Cunningham Motorsports team that uh, Chad Bryant was that was the crew chief on the 77 car over the last number of years, purchased over the winter. It's now Chad Bryant racing. Kept Paul Andrews. Paul is, is actually the crew chief on the 77 here today for Joe Graff Jr. You see a little bit of damage to the right front corner of that 77 car. We're not going to worry about that right now. <laughs> We're just hoping we have enough fuel to get to this final restart. See, look, there was a bumper bar or something that somebody ran, one of these cars ran over on the racetrack while we were looking at the 77 of Joe Graff. And he is one of those that would be in peril to make it on fuel because he pitted on 22. Now that's two laps to the good of the others that we've seen run out. So he topped off under a caution. A reminder, if you're looking for NHRA four wide qualifying from Charlotte, it's after us or right now on FS2. And if you're looking for Jim Trado, we found him with the aforementioned Paul Andrews. You know what? It helps to have a championship cup crew chief as well as a three-time ARCA race winner here at Talladega on the box. And Paul Andrews is the crew chief for Joe Graff for the number 77. A late addition to the team this week as his schedule increased one race. But now this young man is in a position to do what with? How much fuel does he have to work with? Man, there's really no telling how much fuel we got. It's, it's just right there, you know. It depends on how good a job he done saving the fuel, saving fuel on these cautions. I mean, it's potential to have a couple of gallons in there. It's also a potential to run out. So they it really gets, it's just a, who knows where, to, where, are, where we are right now. We'll find out when we get to the pumps or find out when we get to uh, get this thing over with. You know, if we stumble, we didn't do a good enough job saving fuel. We'll see. I like it. We'll see. And that's ultimately <laughs> what it always is because there is no exactness to this. Oh, there really isn't. Again, they have a pretty good idea what kind of fuel mileage they got uh, the first portion of this race, but uh, nobody really knows. The 78 and the, eight and the 70, uh, 78 and the 98 would have been fine if we'd have gone the scheduled distance. And that's uh, with these ARCA races, you never can tell. See, there's a lot of cleanup still going on on the backstretch here, so I'm, I, I would doubt that we're going to see one to go when we get back over to the uh, to the start finish line. A lot of speedy dry on this racetrack from that incident. So the 52, Brandon Grosso gets the free pass. And speaking of the 52, remember that's the championship car from Ken Schrader Racing. Austin Terrio is in Talladega this weekend. And yeah, a very special moment just yesterday. This is uh, something that all the ARCA champions get to do. Yeah, well, the wall of fame right here. Austin Terrio was being added at the top middle of your screen here. That's my brother Benny, who was a two time ARCA champion back in 1968 and 1969. That's at the International Motorsports Hall of Fame at Talladega. The champions going all the way back to 1953. Honored. Also, Austin recently was inducted into the Maine Motorsports Hall of Fame. And yeah, what an amazing job he did last year with this race team. Donnie Richardson, Kenny Schrader. There's Grosso in that 52 this year. It's been a very eventful day, not only a wild one here at Talladega, but there was significant industry news, not just affecting ARCA, but stock car racing, NASCAR as well this morning. And let's be honest, we think we know what's going on on the inside 
I had no hint of this, and a lot of other people didn't seemingly have one either, but NASCAR and ARCA both announced that NASCAR is acquiring ARCA starting in 2020. Yeah, well, I think they're acquiring them now, but I think what, what we're going to see over the next year and a half is exactly business as usual. I talked to Ron Drager. He said, Monday morning, I'm going to get up and I'm going to do the same thing that I would have any other year. Uh, they already have the schedule set for this year. They're working on next year, Ron said in his press conference. But I think just that just ensures the continuity of this series. It's been around since 1953. He wanted to make sure he wanted to make sure that his competitors and that his sponsors and that his track owners knew of, of the plan going forward. And this will ensure that that uh, the Darka series is going to be here for a long, long time. See a little bit of debris on the front of Michael Self's car. He's trying to pull up on the back bumper of the 28 of Sheldon Creed to, to change the pressure and allow that to drop off. It didn't seem to work that time. Back to the announcement. It, to me, it seems like a big win for both sides, for both NASCAR and for ARC. It helps solidify the ladder to work your way up to the Cup Series that's under NASCAR control. And I think it can be good for ARCA too and help the ARCA teams. Let's face it, when you go out into the corporate world, you're trying to get some sponsors involved that may not totally understand motorsports, but if you can associate yourself with NASCAR, I think that helps. I think it does too. And, and, and I was talking to Ron earlier and he said, you know, we've had a relationship since even before the ARCA Racing Series started back in 1953. And it's been on a handshake for over for 60 almost 70 years because it goes back to his grandfather and Bill Big Bill France Bill France senior there were such good friends and they and they essentially competed with the same type of vehicles starting in 1953 when the Arca series was formed and it was a handshake agreement they've worked together ever since and uh, what it's, a, it's been a great relationship and that's that's why I think this relationship will prosper as they become closer together so looking forward to that see what we have in store for the future but as phil mentioned nothing's going to change not only for the right now and for next year as well how they do things starting in 2020 maybe tweaks but the good thing is arca's future is very very solid so rolling again under the caution here still have not given the one to go signal we have two cars right now we talk about Joe Graff Jr. that pitted on lap number 22. Remember, Josh Williams pitted all the way back on lap number 20, and he's being shown in the fifth position right now. That is 60, 62, 64 laps, excuse me, that he has run since pitting. Well, that's more than I would have guessed, so good on them. Just uh, he's been able to Josh has a lot of experience in the series. He's not very old, but he's been here before he finished second. The last time he was at this racetrack, we showed the video of that earlier just by a scant foot or two. He knows how to save fuel. He knows what he's doing. He's been running a lot of Xfinity races over the last couple of years. He's in a position now to get a great finish, but uh, hopefully he's going to have enough fuel to get to the end. Same thing for the 77 of Joe Graff Jr. Okay, update on those that were involved in one of our more recent incidents. Sean Core, the driver of the 46 from Empire Racing, has been checked and released, so good news. And Chase Purdy, the number eight Bama Buggies uh, driver, we're told is, there's no major concern, but he's complaining of a little bit of discomfort. So he's going to be transferred to a local hospital for further observation. But again, the report is positive for Chase Purdy. No major concern is what we're told, but just as a precaution, because he's complaining of some discomfort, they will go to a local hospital for further evaluation. Coming up to one to go to try for overtime number two, our seventh caution of the day. We had one late in regulation. And we've had one in extra laps now. See, the 77 was swerving his car back and forth. I'm sure fuel is a concern there, whether he, whether or not he has enough to get to the end. You see the 15 of Michael Self pulls up to the outside. It's actually a 77 spot. And now, what he also doesn't want to do is ever hit the brake. He's trying to coast <laughs> as much as he can. 
And that's that's a lot to ask a young man of Joe Gray without hardly any experience to go out there. Oh, yeah, you need to run 185 miles an hour, 190 miles an hour, inches apart. And when a caution comes out, you need to save me some fuel, mm -hmm. as much fuel as you can. And keep your spot in line. Keep your spot in line. Don't use the brake. And get ready for maybe the restart of your life right here, because you need one. Leilani Munter is not on the lead lap, so she'll get out of the way. Either pitting or uh, maybe just, uh, I think, just getting out of the way, and she'll go to the tail end of the pack. All right, so concerns for Graf up front, and also just a little bit further back, Josh Williams in sixth. Last pitted 65 laps ago. No concern for Smith or Self or Creed or Lynn. So it's green and white together. It's just one lap. When we see the green, we'll also see the white flag. Zane Smith on the bottom side has a win a few weeks ago in Nashville. 18 years old from Huntington Beach, California on the top side. Joe Graff Jr., 19 from New Jersey. We saw Josh Williams inside third row down on the apron trying to stay on the flat part of the racetrack as long as he can. The second row is Creed on the bottom, Self on the top side. Then Williams and Lynn in row three. Don't forget about nine-time Super Speedway winner Bobby Gerhardt back there in the five car. Watch Michael Self stay, lay back a little bit, worried that the 77 is going to run out of gas. But he doesn't. He goes. He's on the, he's on the button. Over time again. Green again at Talladega and one to go. As they have been all race, they remain side by side, lined up two by two, banging up front. Top four all glued together. Smith and Graf in the front row. Teammates lined up on the inside. Zane Smith and Creed. That's Creed in the white car. On the bottom in row two. Self, the Daytona winner in the green and white Sinclair car up top. Oh, they're banging together. The front two check out just a bit. And Smith and Graf are still glued together. Does Graf have enough fuel to get there? He needs a big push. Creed looking to find space on the bottom below the yellow line. Gets back up in line. Graf still hanging on. Williams comes to the bottom. Top two to the line. Even. Photo finish. Zane Smith has won by inches at Talladega. One of the closest finishes you'll ever see in motorsport. Zane Smith by two hundredths of a second has won in Arca at Talladega. I think they were rubbing from the time they left turn four all the way to the start finish line. Point zero two nine is what it shows on timing and scoring. Waiting for official confirmation and we have it. Zane Smith has won for the second time this season in the ARCA Racing Series. Smith wins the General Tire 200 in thrilling fashion. <sighs> Look at this, Phil. Joe Graff Jr. on the outside. What a great job both these young men did. Look at that margin of it. Just, it's almost too close to call. I had no idea. Wow. <sighs> So Zane Smith at Nashville said not getting to victory lane was starting to get to him. He was very emotional. Now he's won two of the last three, and he's done it on literally the biggest oval in American motorsport. This is the biggest day in his racing career for sure. No doubt. Big one for Zane Smith in the La Paz Margarita Mix Toyota. For MDM Motorsports, high fives down the pit lane. And a lot of really good runs come up just short. You can't be any closer than Joe Graff Jr. Second, Michael Self, third, Sheldon Creed, fourth, Josh Williams, fifth. How about Max Tolman, who had to pit a little while ago? He was something like 18th and comes home to finish sixth. Yeah, great job. Brandon Lynn with a top 10. Bobby Gerhardt, another top 10 as well.
So these are unofficial. Travis Braden, ninth. Andy Sice was a factor early in the race. Had some problems, but gets back up there to the top 10. Great show today at Talladega. Brian Doza, one of many that took some contact. Jesse Awuji, we haven't had a chance to talk in him, about him that much because so much has been going on up front. But his best result, great story. He is a Naval Academy grad, a veteran, a lieutenant in the Navy, and played football at the Naval That's Academy right. as well. Great to see him with a great run. Yes. So Zane Smith has made his way to victory lane. Jim is there, too, to greet him as he gets set to climb out and celebrate here from Talladega. Zane Smith said it's an unbelievable job by this team. What happened to be the driver in front winning this race by the edge of the front nose. Credit goes to his team spotter for telling him where to be on the racetrack, how low, how high to come. And now Zane Smith has the most glorious spot in Talladega, Gatorade Victory Lane. Zane, on the wind down lap, you happen to admit you almost soiled yourself like four times. Where and when and why? Tim, if you asked me if I was going to get this one halfway through this race, I would say, yeah. But man, who won this thing is all these guys and, and Derek kneeling up on that spotter stand, man. That dude is unreal. That, I don't care what anyone says, that is the best spotter in the world. Um, and I have the best people behind me in the world. The Paws, Margarita Mix, Icon Vehicle Dynamics, Speed Vegas Ultra Wheel. So cool to have my uh, whole family here, Icon, my girlfriend, this whole team, and it is so cool. What is it like working with Marty Lindley? On short tracks, yes, you're gonna be strong, but here at Talladega, winning this big in your first full season in the Arca Racing Series? Dude's the man. <laughs> I mean, well, we're four races in and we got two wins. This year's gonna be unreal. Zane Smith, the winner here at Talladega in the General Tire 200 Woo! by the smallest of margins, perhaps in ARCA racing history. Phil, that was a lot of fun. Yes, it was. And here's how the championship stacks up now. All right, well, I'm no longer allowed to predict. I thought Sheldon Creed <laughs> was going to be the winner. Well, he had his worst finish, finish of the year. <laughs> yeah, and he finished fourth. That's right. <laughs> Great season, though, so far for Sheldon Creed. And Zane Smith second in the championship that's where he was when he started started the day but a little bit closer riley herbs as frustrated as he's been still third in the championship and michael self has missed a race but is still fourth here it is again a photo finish zane smith wins by 29 thousandths of a second over joe graff jr thrilling here at talladega super speedway well don't forget we will go straight to NHRA four wide qualifying from Charlotte in just a moment. For Jim Trado and Phil Parsons, I'm Kevin Lee. Join us again from Charlotte Motor Speedway on Thursday, May 24th on FS1. Congratulations, Zane Smith, the ARCA winner from Talladega.